All right, we're going to discuss prenatal care in this module. We're going to start with a case. Uh, we have a 30-year-old woman here for her first prenatal visit. Her estimated gestational age is eight weeks, pretty common. Um, so you should recommend all the following procedures to her except, so this is an except question, which one should we not do um, at, this, at this time when she's eight weeks pregnant? Uh, HIV testing, initiation of folic acid supplementation, measurement of her fundal height, or testing for hepatitis B surface antigen and rubella immunity. Which one should we not do on that list? Measurement of fundal height. And you say, well, wait, why should we not measure her fundal height? Because she's only eight weeks. So usually we initiate um, a measurement of the fundal height at 20 weeks. You're not going to be able to get much uh, until that time. Let's look for, at the schedule for routine prenatal care first. So generally, I know this can change uh, based on where you happen to be practicing in, on the planet. In the United States, for the average risk patient, again, this is not high risk care or somebody who turns into a high risk patient, it's monthly through 28 weeks of uh, gestational age, then twice a month uh, between 28 and 36 weeks, and then uh, from 36 weeks until delivery every single week. That's the typical schedule. And as I mentioned, that's for normal healthy patients, uh, patients with diabetes or other uh, you know, twin pregnancies, they're gonna be seen more often. So just to provide some landmarks over these visits, uh, the first visits includes a pelvic examination complete. Um, also, uh, you're gonna initiate folic acid supplementation. The recommendation is at least 400 micrograms daily. Usually we're recommending one, uh, one milligram daily, so 1,000 micrograms. Uh, body weight and blood pressure checks, all visits. You should be able to auscultate the fetal heart tones with a uh, Doppler um, uh, ultrasonography at age uh, gestational age 10 to 12 weeks. Now at 20 weeks, as I mentioned, that's where you're going to start checking fundal height. And at 36 weeks, you're going to check the fetal lie. Now that's not all we do. Um, we'll, fill, we'll fill in some laboratory work and some other recommendations along the line. But in terms of clinical examinations, those you were going to do. What may you not want to do? Uh, routine urinalysis is now not favored at all visits. Really has a poor sensitivity for di diagnosing uh, common disorders such as gestational diabetes and preeclampsia. Uh, better evaluated in other ways. You're checking your blood pressure. You're doing a glucose tolerance test. And uh, whereas before it was recommended that uh, all women undergo cervical cancer screening uh, during pregnancy, uh, that has to be done just if they happen to uh, fall into their, you know, usually every three-year period uh, where the, uh, the pap test is actually required. If they had it done a year ago and it was normal, no need to repeat it. What about labs at that initial visit? Uh, doing a CBC, an HIV test, a hepatitis B surface antigen test, a urinalysis, blood type and RH screen looking for you know, future incompatibility, rubella immune status, a syphilis test, and gonorrhea and chlamydia testing. And that's it. How, many women have a question about their diet in pregnancy, what's safe to eat, what's unsafe to eat. Um, most artificial sweeteners are probably safe, and again, everything in moderation, especially if it's not you know, overused, it's, it's very likely to be safe, but saccharin should be avoided uh, during pregnancy. Moderate caffeine intake is also probably safe, so one to two cups of coffee per day, extreme intake is not going to be healthy, as is unpasteurized foods and deli meats because of the risk of listeria associated with those um, and the potentially devastating effects on pregnancy. Uh, therefore, uh, avoid those things during pregnancy. Fish, it's possible to eat fish, them, but they do, um, all seafood contains some degree of mercury. And uh, so therefore, the recommendation is a max of 12 ounces of fish per week. But certain types of fish where there's a high concentration of mercury, swordfish and sharks should be absolutely avoided. Also raw fish because of the potential for contamination and infection. And this is in honor of one of my favorite colleagues who like to tell her patients that um, just because you're pregnant, you can't go crazy and uh, consume you know, five banana splits per day. Um, the extra calories that are generally required in, in, during pregnancy are about three to 400 per day or three pieces of fruit or just one candy bar. So you know, the, 
the extra four Sundays probably aren't going to fly and they will just contribute to obesity and you know, problems like uh, gestational diabetes and pregnancy-induced hypertension. And so let's talk about weight gain goals during pregnancy. For normal weight individuals, um, 11 to 15 kilograms or 25 to 35 pounds. For overweight individuals, they don't need to gain as much weight during pregnancy. And they uh, certainly this can lead to um, higher risk after pregnancy if they gain an undue amount of weight in pregnancy, more likely to eventually develop hypertension and diabetes. So a lower, a lower goal, and an even lower goal for women who, bec who become pregnant when they're obese, um, only 11 to 20 pounds or under 10 kilos. All right, how about some other important uh, piece of advice during pregnancy? These are common questions that patients are gonna have. Is it safe for me to go on an airplane? It actually is. It's safe for the fetus up to 36 weeks, but do remember that for long plane flights, uh, women who are pregnant are at a higher risk for thrombosis. Uh, so that's something they should understand uh, before committing to particularly a, a plane flight of four or more hours. Um, can, you know, patients will ask you, can I exercise? Absolutely, particularly if they've been exercising, uh, that's, that's certainly recommended actually. And so moderate exercise, uh, up to 30 minutes on most days of the week is, is helpful, maintains a healthy weight and is healthy for mom and baby. Things to avoid, uh, hair treatments, um, hot tubs and saunas during the first trimester in particular. Those, those, uh, those can uh, potentially do damage to your pregnancy. And for pain, which is really common during pregnancy, acetaminophen is the safest overall. Um, for common uh, cases of nausea and vomiting uh, during uh, the first trimester, vitamin B6 and some dietary patterns with um, having crackers available and uh, eating first, uh, first thing on waking up, uh, that can be helpful as well. And that works for most uh, women. Uh, and that condition does usually pass on after a few weeks. How about ultrasonography? When should it be recommended? Um, if the dates are unclear on the pregnancy, uh, that's an indication for immediate referral for, an ultra, for a sonogram. The real evidence for, uh, for routine ultrasonography, it does um, reduce the, uh, the chance of having a missed multiple gestations where you think there's a singleton pregnancy, turns out to be twins or more. Also reduces the risk for a post-dates pregnancy, but not every study of routine ultrasonography has actually demonstrated any benefit during pregnancy. And again, it's probably worth mentioning now that pregnancy is not like many other things we've talked about, a disease state. This is a natural process that, you know, that's, that's part of the life cycle. Um, that said, in the United States, most women are offered a single ultrasound at 18 to 20 weeks. That's the best time for doing a fetal anatomy survey. And it also fits in in screening for aneuploidy. Let's talk about that. So uh, standard in the United States now is a, a screening system that includes both the first and second trimester testing. And it's mixed. It's not just about lab anymore. It's about ultrasound finding. It's about, and it's added in some maternal factors such as their age. It, has, it demonstrates a fair sensitivity and a strong specificity. And overall still has a low positive predictive value, uh, but it is a good as a screening tool um, to, uh, for, for referring women who appear to be at increased risk for further testing, such as uh, amniocentesis is really the next stage uh, when there is a risk detected for fetal aneuploidy. Um, a choriovillus sampling is another option. The rates of um, amniocentesis is, is a, you know, a specialized procedure. Uh, the, uh, the risk of um, a, um, an abortion with amniocentesis uh, is about 0.5% or so. So it's, it's, a very, it's very rare to have a serious complication, but it is something that needs to be explained to patients before uh, the procedure. Another option that it's, it's has emerged is actually drawing DNA from the maternal circulation and then doing DNA testing on them directly. Um, that provides uh, a more accurate means of screening for aneuploidy, but it's also pretty expensive. Other testing and procedures that are routine uh, during pregnancy, so this is uh, really, again, this is for your average risk patient. One hour uh, glucose tolerance testing at age 24 to 28 weeks. Um, among women who uh, are obese uh, when they become pregnant, um, maybe they should be screened right away for, uh, for diabetes. Also women with a history of previous gestational diabetes get screened right away. But for other, you know, average risk women, uh, they can wait till the second trimester. 
Um, uh, screening for group A of strep at uh, 35 to 37 weeks uh, with initiation of precautions uh, during labor uh, with IV antibiotics uh, to prevent uh, sepsis in the newborn. Uh, repeating a urinalysis for bacteria between 11 and 16 weeks of gestation. So uh, I would recommend the influenza vaccine uh, to every uh, pregnant woman. They are at higher risk for complications of influenza. A recent study showed that influenza vaccination during pregnancy during the first trimester specifically may be associated with a higher risk of uh, conduct problems and behavioral problems among uh, children. And so therefore it's okay to delay till the second or third trimester because there is a broad window for uh, applying the influenza vaccine. Um, Tdap should be applied between 27 and 36 weeks of gestation. And then finally, we don't, uh, women who are pregnant should not receive uh, the, re the rubella vaccine, uh, but they can uh, be seen at the postpartum visit and, uh, and given the rubella vaccine at that time uh, during lactation. So those are some of the guidelines regarding prenatal screening. A lot of information in there, a lot of, uh, a lot of dates to follow, uh, but when you do so, you're really providing the best care for your patients and keeping both mom and baby healthy. Thanks.